Good evening, my name is Morgan Mazell and I am recording my research oral presentation for VLS 401. So basically what my research paper was about was how communities could use social media to promote growth and develop relationships between government officials and the citizens in the communities. And basically I was focusing this on small communities, uh, such as the community in which I live, which is Natchez, Mississippi. We have a population of under 10,000 people. And so I was looking at this from a standpoint as to how these small communities could use social media to promote growth and to promote better rapport between government leaders and the citizens in the community. And from my research, I was pretty impressed to discover that a lot of communities have already done this. And for example, some of the communities that I looked at actually were not in the United States, that one was in Spain that runs completely off social media. So the mayor of that community actually has people who live in the community come to City Hall and register their Twitter accounts so that City Hall officials know they're dealing with someone who lives in that community. One thing that I did find interesting is that in the past, a lot of people have used what they call static media for information dissemination. So community leaders would, of course, who wanted to give information out to their citizenry would put things in the newspaper. So you would basically almost be begging for newspapers to cover events like the board meetings, city board meetings, any kind of important information that citizens needed, you basically had to ask the newspaper come take this information and give it out to the public. Or you were using websites which were basically archaic almost in a lot of senses today because the way social media works is it's almost like real time. You can record things and upload them immediately. You can record it as it happens with the go live feature. So there are a lot of things that allow the people today to be involved. And I thought that was really important. So when you look at the static version of media coverage, being newspaper, magazine, of course, which is very, you know, dated. And then you have websites which can take a little while to update. You have to have someone who's on staff to do that, to update it, you know, every time something changes. And that can get cumbersome. So my idea was really to use social media to the benefit of small communities. Because let's face it, it's free um, or very inexpensive. Because in my research, I found that most professionals in public relations, media relations, communication relations of any kind, get paid probably in the vicinity of about anywhere from 45000 and up. So they're pretty nicely paid salaries to these individuals who do this for a living. And so you can really cut a huge chunk of a budget down by not having those professionals on staff if you just give someone on your staff already that you know duty to assign them to be the person who handles your social media account. So one thing I did find interesting was that if you are going to engage your city leaders in social media platforms, that they need to understand that they don't have to respond to every single negative comment because that was one of the drawbacks that I did find in my research, but that they could at least acknowledge situations. So when someone comes to you and says, hey, mayor so-and-so, there is a you know pothole three blocks down and you have had four weeks to fix it, and they start getting negative about it, you can at least say, okay, we know it's there and we're working on it. So you have acknowledged them and not left them in the dark. And I think that that is a big part of having a good rapport with your citizenry, and that I think fosters positive relationships and positive growth, that when people feel like they have been acknowledged, whether or not their needs get met the way they want them to be met, but they have at least been acknowledged, and I think that's a positive step in the right direction. Also, you need to tell the people who are using the social media platforms to know that they're representing themselves on a professional level, because there was a congressman in California who used his personal Facebook page for his public office duties, and when he blocked a constituent because of negative comments, she sued him and said he was using his 
you know, Facebook as a platform to speak to them on as their, as his constituency. And he said, it's my personal Facebook page, so I can block somebody if I want to. And anyway, it wound up that he reinstated her as a Facebook friend because he was in fact using his personal Facebook page for his civic duty. So you want to be sure that you tell people that they need to be careful about what they put on the media out there and just use it as any other form of media relations. Also, you can look at it from a standpoint of being able to get information out quickly and to also address any issues that are coming up in a really quick fashion. So if something happens right now on the river where I live, somebody could put it on Facebook immediately and hundreds if not thousands of people can see it instantaneously. And so it's a quicker way to get information out there. Some of the folks in the national government, as far as Homeland Security, have used social media for information dissemination with storms, other emergency alerts. Um, I know that we all see on our cell phones a lot of times now that if there are amber alerts in our areas, it's part of the code red and it comes out immediately. And people are able to get that information instantaneously so that's a really good thing about social media is it's fast and it's broad also another thing that I found interesting is that you can self-promote pretty much and that's really where I wanted to focus on the growth of communities small communities because you don't have the ability to really hire someone who could get paid in upwards of a hundred thousand dollars a year possibly as a you know a professional in that field but as a concerned citizen you can voice your opinion and self-promote things in your community. You can go live on Facebook, you can have Twitter accounts that push information out quickly and effectively, and you can also use other forms of media, Instagram, um, there's of course YouTube. There are actually probably several different media forms that you could use on social media to get your information out there, like Periscope and other things like that. So it's really a positive thing, and as I can see, you know, it's, it's social media is here. It's, it's, I don't think it's going anywhere. So it would probably be in everyone's best interest to at least figure out how to best utilize it for their needs. And of course, looking at small communities, I think it could very much benefit them. And so recently we had a community in, you know, alert as far as a new business coming to our community, which was going to be placed in Vidalia, Louisiana, which is right across the river from where I live. And this is going to bring probably about roughly 30 jobs and those jobs are going to be high paid jobs especially for this area in the vicinity of about fifty thousand dollars a year so that's good money around here nevertheless within 24 hours someone has created a facebook page giving information about that company in a negative light saying that they're not environmentally friendly they're not um, ethically friendly or doing things ethically as far as the business is concerned with the environment and so they're really concerned about how this business is going to affect us in this area so within 24 hours social media was able to pull together people who are concerned about this business coming they're able to pull together and put this community together in a way to get out information for all the people who might not know about this because of course the paper covered it in a very nice way saying we're going to get jobs in the area they're going to be very good paying jobs and this is something that is concerning to some citizens and so having that person who took the initiative to say hey wait a minute we need to look at this a little further they're able to get that information out there so it was very quick and it's not necessarily that the information is false because you know quick sometimes means not well researched but there are documents out there and they're just flooding the information out and I think that that's the way we could do all kinds of information and people can pick and choose what they want to read and if they follow certain things then they can be informed about those things but nevertheless I feel like social media is a platform that if small cities and governments could look at it in such a way as being a positive form of communication it could definitely improve their status in you know the, the state they live in and the world at large so I think that that was probably the most interesting thing about my research is that I feel like it is something that we could definitely use on all scales and that there obviously are people who are looking at it the same way as I am as a way to grow and foster positive relationships in the communities around us. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.